Welcome to the ETFinalScore.com preview show. It is week two of the Texas High School football playoffs here in East Texas. I'm Trevor Peel, and with me, like usual, breaking things down for you is Chris Perry and Travis Yosting. Guys, it's all about sports. Let's get right to it. Chris, the Robert E. Lee Red Raiders, their season is over. They played a very good Waco Midway team last week um, in the, ba the brand new Baylor Stadium. Tell us a little bit about that. They just made too many mistakes. You can't throw an interception on the first play of the game against a team as good as Waco Midway. Waco Midway scored on all nine of its possessions in the first half. That's just, you just don't hear about things like that. They were very, very efficient, passing and running, and of course on special teams as well. Lee with four turnovers in the first half, three in the first quarter. They're down 41 to seven at the end of the first quarter. I thought Zach Hall showed signs of uh, and what we've all seen. He broke off a, a long touchdown run and broke, broke off another one in the second quarter. But uh, Midway was just too much for Lee. It was a shame. Uh, Talking to Coach Pisky, he was disappointed because I think he thought his team could could stay with that team if they played a perfect, if they played a really good game, but they didn't give themselves a chance. Now, reading your article after the game, you said it looked like players were kind of content with the loss. Uh, break some of that down for us. I wouldn't say they were content with the loss, but when you're down 62 to 14 at halftime, you go in it, you go in the locker room and your season's over. Yeah. So now let's try to finish off and mm -hmm. make and do as well as you can in the third and fourth quarter and that's what they did they played you know, they played decent football in the third and fourth quarter and when the game was over the game was over so long ago mm -hmm. that you didn't quite you didn't it was just a weird feeling down yeah. on the on the field seniors felt that they accomplished what they wanted to do which is get to the playoffs they've they've set a, a set a legacy now for the next team so that's what I mean I don't mean they were content yeah. with the yeah. loss but when you're down by that many points, you're not coming back. I mean, the Plano East, John Tyler wasn't even 62-14. Yeah. And that's considered one of the best you know, comebacks ever before you, before JT spoiled Plano East's yeah. comeback. Uh, so that's kind of what I thought. I mean, I thought they were happy and content with the fact that yeah. they got them to the postseason. Yeah. What did you think of the Robert Lee Red Raiders season? Uh, you know, they had an amazing offense. You know, they still have by far been the best offense JT has faced this year. Uh, the problem is defense. You know, they just couldn't stop people when it mattered. Now, now, real quick, Chris, what are some things that the Red Raiders can take from this season and take to next season? Well, they can take almost their, all of their skill positions. They return every single one. And they lose Trevor Carr, who's a big senior leader for them, and they lose Juwan Banks, who's a big bruiser, who's also a pretty good little slot receiver who can also, you know, run, you know it has scored some touchdowns. But they return so much speed. They return both Ijuan Barker and Jordan Devers on the outside. They uh, return uh, Mason Parker and Tyrick Grayson, who are their speedsters on the inside. And of course, you got Tavon Wesley, Devonte Craver, and oh yeah, Zach Hall is back. <laughs> so on offense, they're just loaded coming back. They're going to have to find some offensive linemen. They lose a couple guys, but it doesn't matter because the defense is going to have to play better, and they know that. I mean, that's the one thing the coaches talked about. The kids, the, the kids talked about. I mean, they they did their best. But their best wasn't good enough this year. They're going to have to do better next year on defense. Yeah, they will be a team for us to keep our eye on. Now, both Brookhill and Gorman won last week. And we can't count on next week talking about one of these teams because they already play each other. Um, this Saturday, 4 p.m. in New London at Bruce Bradshaw Stadium. What can we take from this game? Uh, you know, it's going to be another classic, I think. Uh, you got both teams that are uh, 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 playing well right now. Obviously, Brookhill having to overcome the injury of uh, their top receiver, uh, Brazier. But uh, Gorman, uh, they, they've been really impressive lately, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, they're looking to get a little revenge from earlier yeah. in the year. What do you think about this game, Chris? I think Gorman is doing what you want a playoff team to do, which is peak at the perfect time. I mean, when you beat, beat Grace, take care of your playoff game, and now you got Brook Hill, who's banged up. The guy that uh, destroyed Gorman the first time they played each other, that they really couldn't stop, is Seth Brasher, like what Travis said, and he's injured. So I think that, that really puts puts the ball in, in Gorman's court with regards to who should have the advantage and who should win this game. Now, I'm not. that doesn't mean Brook Hill's not going to show up and, and, yeah. and, and take a beating. I think Brook Hill and Gorman, this is going to go down to the fourth quarter. I just think that Brasher gave Gorman that, gave uh, Brook Hill that edge that they kind of don't have right now. They're going to need that go-to receiver. Alex Hale has shown that he can do that, though, so we'll see, if he, uh, we'll see what happens in this ballgame. Yeah, again, 4 p.m. in New London. We will have coverage of this game on our Facebook and Twitter. Let's move on to Chapel Hill. Take it on Navasoto Friday, 7 p.m. in Conroe at Buddy Moore. Head Stadium. Can, can Chapel Hill beat this uh, very good Navasoto team? On paper, no. 
but games aren't played on paper. Mm-hmm. I mean, Chapel Hill has shown that they can they can stack up against anybody. We've talked we've talked numerous times about how difficult their non district schedule was, how they challenged themselves. Well, they challenged themselves so they could be prepared for games like this. On paper, Navasota is loaded, mm-hmm. I mean, and, and and Travis saw Navasota a couple years ago roll to a state championship. Yeah, they're, they're one of the a, best teams I've seen in years at that level. <laughs> yeah, I would say I could say very good Gilmer yeah. a Gilmer team. So on paper. You'd have to say Navasota has the advantage, but like we said, that's that's why they that's why they play the games. We'll and see if Chapel Hill can week, get the playoff. You, know, you would have said Huffman Hargrave had the advantage. True, absolutely. Paper, but Chapel Hill came out and pulled it off. And I, I picked against them. Yeah. I mean, they fooled me once. Maybe they'll fool me <laughs> twice. What do you think Chapel Hill might have to do to come away with a win? Um, they're going to have to play a really solid game. As always, you know, turnovers. You can't turn the ball over. Um, you know, and if they if they can get. Uh, you know, a couple turnovers here and there, you never know what can happen. Yeah. Well, let's move on over to the uh, last week Longview Lufkin game. Now, Longview was up 28 to 0. All I could think of was you both picked Longview to win in your, your picket line. And I was just wondering, I mean, I wonder what Chris and Travis are thinking right now. What did y'all think when the score was 28 to 0, Travis? You know, I was thinking, uh, you know, maybe Longview's, uh, you know, resurgence in district play was down to their opponents rather than, you know, they're, you know, playing better. But, Obviously, they showed that uh, you know they they have a lot of heart and they came back and you know rivalry games like that you never know what's going to yeah. happen so uh, you know you got to give credit to Longview for yeah, coming definitely. back. The Rose Stadium mystique and the Longview Lobos. Yeah. they 15. just do not lose at Rose Stadium when it was tw- like, so it was twenty eight nothing like what Travis mm-hmm. said. I don't I don't know why I just thought I said well Lufkin you know Lufkin took care of Longview but I for, I just don't think this game's over. Then I kept seeing tweets after tweets out it was getting closer and closer and closer. And of course, you see the final. It didn't the final didn't surprise me at all because Longview is more than capable of coming back from that kind of deficit. But uh, take nothing away from Lufkin. I'm, I, I'm, I mean, you were at the game. Mm-hmm. Was it a more of a Lufkin giving it away, or was it Longview taking it? It was Longview taking it, actually. Longview was just busting out the big plays. I actually showed up towards halftime, and I remember texting back to the studio saying, "This game's a blowout. I'm probably going to come back home early." Um, and it actually turned out the opposite way. But I did see now Longview did get a big break on that long touchdown pass. They said it was a tip pass, and it actually went off the feet of the wide receiver in the air and was caught. And we have all the footage on our um, videos tab at etfinalscore.com of that final drive. But it was just Longview fighting back, crawling. I mean, even at the end of the first half when they had that big 78-yard screen pass uh, down the left side of the field, it was just unbelievable. Lufkin's defense kind of just kind of just fell apart towards the end. Mm. Well, it's, it's tough. When you're up 28 points, you think you're on easy yeah. street. You're already mm-hmm. looking towards the next opponent. And then once that wave starts going the other direction, once the, we say, once the bog starts rolling down, you're pushing the thing up the mountain. Yeah. And once it starts coming down at you, sometimes it's tough to, to halt the momentum. Well, you also, you also had to think, even at the end of that first half, you know, Longview got a, uh, an unsportsmanlike uh, flag walking back to the locker room because one player was in the referee's face saying something because they didn't give him that touchdown at the very end, which he did cross the line is on the video, but they didn't give it to him. So Chumley was just yapping at the referee, gave him a flag, and it seemed like you know Longview was trying to give up. They're all sitting outside their locker room, sitting there. Coach was just sitting there, sit back, and I was like, man, what is Longview thinking right now? You know, but they were able to fight, come together as a team, and pulled away with a victory. And now they're going to be playing again here at Rose Stadium once again. That's 15 games in a row they've won here at Rose Stadium. Uh, it'll be Saturday, 3 p.m. against Mansfield Lake Ridge, who beat Kimball 42-17. to Like you said earlier, it doesn't say too much, but what do you think Longview's going to do this game? And it's hard to tell just because last week we thought they were going to uh, pretty much beat Lufkin with ease, but it came to, down to a close game. I imagine they went in after the game. Coach King looked at his team and said, hey, good job. Don't ever do that again. You know, that's, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's play Lobo football, which he likes to always say. Let's play Lobo football from this point on. I just don't see that happening again. I, I think Longview's had its scare. Mm-hmm. I think it's, they're going to be able to take care of business this game. How are you, Travis? Yeah, I mean, uh, any Mansfield team is going to be you know, tough to beat, uh, as they've proven in recent years. But uh, Longview, you know, after having that close game last year, I, I think they come out and take care of business from the start. Again, we will have coverage of this Longview game as well since last week's was such a thriller. Again, it will be here on Saturday at 3 p.m. at Rose Stadium, which Longview's on a 15-game winning streak here at Rose Stadium. Let's head to one of our sponsors. When we return, let's talk about another football team that started off slow on Friday. At Kelly Community Federal Credit Union, we have a monopoly on savings. So cruise on over to a Kelly Community branch today for big savings on loan rates and better earnings on deposits and investments. At Kelly Community. 
Welcome back to the ETFinalScore.com preview show. I'm Trevor Peel with Travis Yost and Chris Perry. Now, Longview wasn't the only team that started off slow um, on Friday. Travis, John Tyler looked a little sluggish against Texas High. Yeah, you know, for the uh, third or fourth straight week, they uh, allowed a touchdown on the opening drive for their opponent. Uh, they were down 17-7. to You know, they could have been down even worse. Uh, could have been 24-7 to had they not come up. John Tyler came up with a huge fumble recovery at the one-yard line. And that kind of swung momentum from then on. It was all John Tyler. Yeah, what did you think whenever it was 17-7 and Texas High was up? I thought John Tyler probably, even though you, you try not to, I think they probably took Texas High a little lightly. Mm -hmm. They played Ennis. They played Lufkin, these better teams and uh, on paper. And I think that they felt that, that, the, you know, that Texas High was going to be kind of an easy out. And it took a half mm -hmm. to realize that, hey, it's the postseason. You need to come out and play. And John Tyler did what they probably should have done from the opening kickoff, and that's just take it to the Texas High, uh, you know, Texas High team and, and, and win the game. And that's been kind of the biggest problem for JT this year is finding that consistency. Mm -hmm. you know, if they play like they did in the second half against Nacogdoches, against the Texas High, if they do that all game, you know, they're going to be tough to beat for anyone. Yeah, and well, John Tyler will play this Friday against Mansfield Summit. Now, uh, what are some things that Coach Holmes told you about Mansfield Summit? Yeah, they uh, have a uh, pretty good speed option play that they like to do that uh, they've been trying to practice uh, to defend against this week. Um, yeah, they're, they're a pretty good team. They, they have four losses, but they're four good losses and in close games, so they're not going to be easy to beat by any means. Do you think it could be trouble for John Tyler if they start off slow against Mansfield Summit? Oh, definitely. You know, uh, and plus, Mansfield teams have kind of had a, a jinx over JT in the last uh, mm -hmm. year or so in playoffs. Uh, you know, Mansfield teams beat football, basketball, uh, both boys and girls basketball in the playoffs, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're going to want to you know, get a little revenge. What will be some keys for a victory for John Tyler? Uh, I think uh, if they can continue running the ball the way they've been doing it, keep getting turnovers, they've been you know, plus 15, 17 like that in the turnover margin this year. Uh, Jeremy Wilson, he had almost 200 yards rushing last week, so if they keep doing that, you know, they're, they're going to keep rolling. That's another game that we will have live highlights on our Twitter and Facebook on this Friday. Now let's head to our picket line. Well, one question I want to get from you la from last week was Nacogdoches ended up losing to Marshall. Real quick, what was your take on that? I was a bit surprised. Uh, I thought Nacogdoches uh, was better than that, but they've shown they, they lost to Jacksonville earlier, earlier in the year, so they've proven they can beat anyone. And they've proven they can lose to anyone. Yeah, exactly what he said. Very yeah. hot and cold. But Marshall was the team that I remember I, I kind of likened a little bit to Lee in the fact that they were a team that, were, that was coming on. That they've, they've had success. They were in the state championship in 2004, too. When Lee, uh, when Lee won its state course, theirs did not go as well <laughs> since they ran into Highland Park and a quarterback who plays for the Detroit Lions now. But um, this was a chance for Marshall to kind of show that they've, that they've taken the next, next step and they were able to do it. Yeah, it's good. Marshall will play South Oak Cliff um, here on Friday at Rose Stadium. Now to our picket line. You've got five games, five picks. First game I throw at you, Longville and Mansfield Lake Ridge. I just, I think Longview had its scare. They're going to take care of business. I agree, Longview. You've got Athens and Kennedale. I think Kennedale. I think uh, they're undefeated, and uh, I think they've been looking pretty good. I'd, I would take Kennedale as well. we got Mineola and Commerce. Mineola had... They've, they've str they, they struggled so much when they were in, in 3A, mm -hmm. which is now which is now 4A, and now they're now now they're down in classification. They seem to be doing pretty well. I like Mineola because their special teams are so good. If it comes down to a field goal, they've got a kicker who's already kicked two game-winning kicks, and uh, so I, I I'll go with uh, I'll go with Mineola. Mineola, yeah, I'm going with Mineola. Mineola. And then of course we have Brook Hill and Gorman. Uh, I think Gorman's going to win this rematch. I mm -hmm. believe Gorman is going to take the rematch as well. I think Brook Hill had him the first time. I think Gorman's yeah. going to take the second one. And then we got JT and Mansfield Summit. JT and Mansfield Summit. The Mansfield Jinx. <laughs> I think John Tyler's going to get this one. John Tyler. Yeah, John Tyler. John Tyler. Well, overall record, Chris 20 and 10, Travis 22 and 8. We'll see you next week. Now let's switch gears a little bit over to basketball. First, we're going to have the we're going to hear from coach Clark of the John Tyler Lions and he what he expects from this season. Well, my, my goal is always to win a district championship. That's the motto of the school. That's the motto of the program. If you look around this gym, you know, Carl Love, the great coach Carl Love, he put up multiple banners, and that's what we talk about these kids. You know, we have it up. That's one of our goals, to win district championships. So that's our goal is to win it. You know, uh, we fell short the last two years coming in second place, but uh, our goal is always to win the district championship. That's our goal. So what do you think will be the defining characteristic of this team? Uh... You know, that, that remains to be seen. So we'll, we'll, we'll just see. We'll just see. I just know they're working hard every day and they're doing what we ask them. So uh, that's good signs for a good, good season. 
Now, Travis, they played last night. Uh, what can we take away from that game? You know, they started a little slow, kind of like the football team in a way. Uh, you know, they, they took a little while to get into rhythm. Once they kind of keyed on the uh, offensive shooters that uh, Roy City had, you know, they put it all together, offense, defense, and pulled away in the end. Yeah, and then also, let's switch over to the Red Raiders boys basketball coach and hear what Coach Coleman had to say. My goal for Robert E. Lee is to turn Robert Lee into a team that uh, frequently, oftenly represent East Texas in the deep rounds of the playoff. Uh, we want to we wanna, we wanna have a good season, but we really want to focus our, our attention on our district, uh, to what we finish well in our district, and then have a chance to compete more than one round in those playoffs. And uh, maybe every now and then venture off to San Antonio. Now, Chris, they haven't started their season off yet, but you've talked to Coach Coleman a little bit. What does he expect from the season? Well, he's excited. He's, it's a lot of it's. They've got a uh, Garrett Thibodeau who just mm -hmm. uh, signed with Air Force or you know, yeah, signed with Air Force. He's a big you know six eight post. They've got a lot of speed. They got some guys coming from football to basketball. This is going to be interesting. This first game Friday is against Lufkin, and Lufkin now they're out of the football playoffs too. So both teams will be fully loaded. So that should make a, for a pretty good ball game. I'm just excited to see uh, what Robert E. Lee does under Jeff Coleman this year. Definitely. We are too here on the preview show. We're slowly going to start easing into other sports as uh, we get closer and closer to the end of the playoffs in Texas high school football. Guys, Travis, Chris, thank you for your time today. That is going to wrap up the ETFinalScore.com preview show. As playoffs begin to travel further away from home, lock in with us on Facebook and Twitter. We will have live highlights this Friday night along with Saturday afternoon games. Also, don't forget to check out the most accurate and up-to-date scoreboard in East Texas at ETFinalScore.com or on the app. Have a great week and weekend. We will see you next week.